privilege to be joined here by Matt Hines, who is a legendary thought leader in the B2B marketing space. I just geek out on this stuff, you know, just you know, helping B2B companies build pipeline, connect better with buyers, build more repeatable, scalable processes to deliver revenue results, uh, and helping marketing teams really become more revenue responsible. Account base is uh, kind of the hottest trend right now in B2B marketing, and for, probably for good reason. Yeah. But the value of account base is that it brings marketing and sales together, right, so supposedly. And you know we've been trying to achieve that as a holy grail since probably when the earth started to cool, right? <laughs> well, thank goodness it's actually happening, right? I mean, I don't think it's happening as quick as some people want it to. Yeah. And there are, clear, I mean, there are some organizations where sales just wants to do their own thing and marketing acts like a glorified arts and crafts department. We still see plenty of that. Yeah. But we also see organizations where sales and marketing aren't just strategically aligned, meaning they've got the same objectives and they understand they have the same definitions of what a lead is and opportunity is but they're tactically and operationally aligned as well. Like they know what happens between sales and marketing on Tuesday. Um, yeah. You've got marketing that is still driving pipeline and driving demand, but a marketing team that realizes that you can't buy a beer with a marketing qualified lead. That what really matters is the outcome of marketing. It's the influence you have on revenue and sales. It takes a culture change inside organizations to make that happen. So you said a lot of great stuff there. One of them was the death of MQLs. I heard that MQLs is a four-letter word, right? No? I have no problem with MQLs. I mean, any, any more than I have, I don't have a problem with clicks and likes, mm. right? I mean, you're gonna, let's say you send an email. Like, you know, no matter how strategic or highfalutin your ABM program is, you're probably gonna send emails you're going to measure the open rates and click rates of those emails, right? Because you want higher open rates, you want higher click rates. There's the operational marketing that still matters. But if you go to your leadership team and you put on the scorecard that says, here's what marketing is doing, and you have clicks and likes on that, they're gonna think that's what you value. They're gonna think that's what you're trying to accomplish. Right. MQLs in the same boat, right? So marketing qualified leads are an important component of driving demand and driving a predictable pipeline for your organization but it doesn't end there. And I think a lot of organizations that historically have said, my goal is qualified leads, are shortchanging their own ability to drive and be perceived as a, a, a sales driver and a revenue center for the organization. And I think the other thing about MQLs in an account-based format is volume doesn't matter anymore. You know, We have a client where their addressable market is 140 companies. We're not worried about lead volume with them at all, right? It's about how many conversations are you having? How many discovery calls are you having? How many clients are you getting to agree to the next step of a conversation about their problems? What's not working is sort of a short-term approach to account base, where you say, well, we're, you know, we're gonna do a campaign where we're gonna target these people, we're gonna do a direct mail piece, and after a month, we're gonna see if it works. Um, what doesn't work is when marketing creates a whole multi-touch integrated campaign and sales isn't even involved in the process. Right. For me, account-based is a couple things. One, it is, as we talked about, sales and marketing working together at every stage of the buying journey. Account-based is also taking account for the entire buying committee inside these large organizations. So if you're still treating every organization as one person representing that company, you're not really doing anything to build consensus inside the organization to understand and solve a problem. Can you talk to me about how companies go about culture, a culture change or shift? Sure. We'll start with the sales and marketing side. I think traditionally you see a lot of funnels that are split right in the middle horizontally. Like marketing owns the top of the funnel, sales owns the bottom. I think today we see an environment where marketing and sales both have roles at most stages of the buying process, especially with account base. So we're splitting that funnel more vertically and it's kind of like a little bit of a diagonal vertical where marketing may own the majority of the front of the process, sales may own the majority of the bottom, but they're still both evolved. So figuring out like how do they actually integrate their efforts is, is not a trivial thing. Within marketing, we were talking earlier about moving from being more activity-based to being more outcome-based. Um, and we see resistance from a lot of marketers that say, I can control leads, I can control activity, I can control impressions and who looks at what. I can't control what happens post-lead. But the sales team doesn't control that either. Right? The sale, if the sales team controlled what happened after the lead, they'd all hit their number. So I think getting marketing to embrace a little more ambiguity in, in the outcome of their work um, is part of that culture change. And from top to bottom, we've, we've seen companies struggle with that. But you know, this also, I think, part of driving that culture change on both of those fronts, on marketing changing the way they work, on sales and marketing changing the way they work, you need leadership to buy in on this. You need the C-suite, you need the very top of the organization to say this is the way we're gonna operate as a business moving forward. And you guys go figure it out, but we are endorsing this and we, are, and we know it might be messy. We know it might not be effective right away. 
Um, there's some research I've seen that shows the impact greater levels of integration between sales and marketing can have on revenue performance. And it shows an up and to the right correlation. But what's interesting are the stages. It starts, it doesn't go from no integration to minimal to moderate. It goes from no integration to ineffective to minimal to moderate. So what that tells me is if you're trying to integrate sales and marketing, you go from no integration to not good integration, right. you're still improving your numbers. You're still increasing your ability to drive revenue in the organization. Yeah, that's actually a really good point. Thank you for joining our program. Oh, it's a pleasure. And uh, yeah, enjoy Thanks the rest of your conference. I will. Thank yeah. you very much. Great.